Hello, welcome to our instructional video on how to play Zularetto. For those who don't like to read the instruction manual or are just too lazy to do it. First, let me tell you, Zularetto won Game of the Year in 2007 in Germany. It sold out for several months before Christmas and sold out for several months right after Christmas. It's now back in stock and we at Empire Board Games are pleased to provide this instructional video free of charge. Pause it. Okay, now that I've paused the camera, let me put this down and show you what Zularetto entails. First you'll find it comes with a box. It also comes with five trucks, these little wooden pieces that are trucks. It comes with five boards. This is a two to five player game. It also has some extra additions to your zoo you can add on. I'll explain how that works in a minute. It also comes with an instruction book, some coins, and most importantly some zoo animals. We also have our sweet zoo animal bag. This is where all the rest of the animals are. We've separated out the camels and the elephants. If you're playing a five-player game, you'll want to include these into the game. However, for our demonstration, we're only going to be playing a three-player game, so we're going to put these two back into the game box. So we'll also be putting back the instructions, since that's what you don't want, since you're not watching this video. And let me show you how to set it up. Pause. Okay, now let's proceed to the setup. We've now magically set this up so you don't have to watch us. Each player, in this case there are three players, will have a board with an expansion. Notice the board and expansion. And two bucks, two coins. Next, we also counted out 15 of the animal tiles. You notice the animal tiles are all squares. When you're pulling the animal tiles out for the first time, you're going to make sure that you don't accidentally um, rip them as you do. This one here is a monkey. My family knows that it's a monkey. Let me show you that. We tore it out and it, the corner tore just a little bit. So you want to be careful pulling those out. My kids don't realize it, so it's not a big deal. But uh, it's a big deal to me. We also have our babies here. All the babies. If you get a male and a female animal, they'll immediately mate and make a baby into your pen. You'll notice in these pens, uh, you have a pen for each person. You also have a truck for each person. Then you have a bag. You're going to draw animals out of here, put them in these trucks to be able to fill up your zoo. The way the zoo works, there's a space for four in one spot, five in another, six in another. You can also, for three coins, you can flip this over and create a fourth pen, which will hold another five. As you fill these up, you get coins for that, and we'll show you how that works in a minute. But that's the basic setup of the game. It's very simple to set up. You take 15 of these squares, put them here, put the rest in here, and spread out your babies, put in your change, and two bucks each. You also have an action summary card. Everybody gets one card for summary and everybody has one of those to remind them what they can do on their turn. And that's how the setup works. Now on to gameplay. The first step is to draw a animal out of the bag. And you're going to take that animal, look at it. In this case he has a panda. He's going to stick it on a truck. It doesn't matter which truck because it's the first one. He chose to stick it there. Then the next player will then take the bag, just like so, smooth and effortlessly, draw an animal, and then stick it on a truck as well. In this case, she drew, drew a coin that will go on. She can put it on with the panda or she can put it on with the truck that's empty. And if you'll draw one for the third player, that would have been for the third player. That one looks like it is a kangaroo. Then passed on. Notice this kangaroo piece. It's, there you go. See, it's got a gender to it. See the little gender thing? The panda bear does not have that. It's not gendered. If you get two, male and female, you'll immediately create a baby when they go into your pen. Put those back on. Play will continue. At any time, you may continue to draw or you may decide to pick up a truck. You don't have to wait until this three filled to pick up a truck to put them in your pen. Especially the first turn, it doesn't really matter. But as you draw them, you'll eventually get to the point where you want to draw a truck. That one there now is full. There's three different kinds of animals there. Good. Now at this point, another thing you can do on your set of drawing, you can also perform one of these actions. You can move a tile, exchange a type of tile for one coin each. You can also purchase a tile, which is two coins. Asterisk is that you can, you'll have to split that. You have to give one to the bank and one to the person you're buying a tile from out of their barn. You can also discard a tile, or for three bucks you can expand your zoo. So those are five types of actions you can perform. You do that in lieu of drawing a truck or putting a truck on. So at this point, let's say that player number two decides, I'm not going to draw another tile, I'm going to draw that truck. Player two will then put those in her pen, wherever they can find places. Notice that you can't put the same kind of animal in the same pen. So 
So she'll put it in one of each of her three pens. Now if she draws on the next turn and draws a different kind of animal than those three, she will then have to put them into her barn. You'll notice to put them in the barn, so you'll just stick it in that barn, which then costs money to either reallocate or to uh, move around. That's how that works. This is pretty typical for this uh, game. You'll see that these two got filled up. So the other two players will then take them. Why don't you go ahead and draw first? Draw one. And then she would not have a turn because she hasn't gone. So as someone draws out, once they draw their truck, they're done for the turn. Then we'll take ours. I also drew a cart. The carts at the end of the game go, if you have them, they'll help you with points later. So you can put a cart on the four cart spots that are available. You can fill up your animals. Do you have yours? Then what do we do next? We put all of our trucks back in and start the next round. And then the person who went last, which is me in this case, will draw another tile. And start again. Why would I want to try it? So I'm now out for the turn. I can put the kangaroo in here. The flamingo with the other flamingo, and I have another one of those carts. Then this person's turn, he's not going to draw. He's going to choose to take his three bucks and upgrade his zoo. So he can upgrade his zoo and create a new pen. See that? Now he has an extra pen. He just paid his three dollars into the bank, and he has a pen. So now it becomes the second player's turn. Now I don't get to go because I already drew a truck. It's now this way. So he can draw a truck, or he can draw a thing, or he can spend money. You choosing to draw? Okay, now it's his turn. He gets to choose a truck because there's nothing left to do unless he wants to spend money. And then she's left with the one that she did, probably didn't want. He got a cart and a coin and a kangaroo, so he's fine. Notice what happened with this player here. She got a cart, a panda, and a lion. She doesn't have anywhere to put the lion, so the lion has to go into her barn. Notice where she put her lion, in the barn. Why? Because there's nowhere else to put it. She's already got pandas. Abby flamingos and kangaroos. So she's stuck with one in her barn. The only way to get that out of her barn is to expand or to pay some money to discard it or to hope someone else buys it off of her. At the end of the game that will come into play. You can see the game has progressed nicely, especially for this player since he has a whole bunch of money. He likes to fill up that pen. He's got space. He's got lots of money. So what he's going to do on his turn, rather than drawing out of the bag, take two bucks, give one buck to the bank, one buck to the player, and draw the flamingo that was in her pen and put it in, in her barn, rather, and put it in his pen, thus filling it up. By doing that, you'll notice at the bottom here, he will get five points at the end of the game if he keeps that full. But also that coin there means that he will get an extra coin. He can draw a coin from the bank. Go ahead and take a coin. There you go. And if he filled this one up, he would have gotten two coins. This one here, however, he gets zero coins for filling it up. He only gets a lot of points. And this one over here, he also gets a coin. Turn. So now the next player will then draw from the bag. Draws a tile. Now on player three's turn, you'll notice that he has some uh, panda bears. One of the panda bears is actually a gendered panda bear. He also sees on the trucks here that one of the panda bears is also gendered. If he gets a male and a female in his pen, they're going to mate and create a baby, which he will then have to put in his barn. So rather than drawing a tile this turn, he's going to choose to give a coin to the bank and rearrange two zoo, t zoo pens. He's going to take the zebras out and move the pandas over, thereby creating extra space for the baby to come. And then it's going to be the second, the first player's turn again. Then player two is going to choose to pick up the cart, the truck. Player three will then draw a, a tile, which looks like it's a flamingo. Put it down. This looks like an opportunity for him. Then the next player will put his on, take his cart, get his coin. Oh, and you'll notice that the second player also had a baby on there, so now they have a baby. Notice the baby has a circle on it and has filled up that cart. This player will also have a panda bear and therefore a panda baby because there is a male and a female. And they'll get a lion, which goes in the pen. Notice has two lions in there now. And then a flamingo. And that's how the game is played.